I will consider another important aspect of faith, which I have called faith to refuse. Faith to refuse, or if you want to be more dramatic, faith to reject. Faith to re refuse, and I will do it in two parts. So this is part one of faith to refuse. When I talk about faith to refuse, it is the ability to reject wrong labels on your life. It is the ability to reject being stuck in a place that God has not purposed for you. And it is the kind of faith that Moses exercised in order for him to fulfill his destiny. And our text will be taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 24 to 26. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. Now, if you are familiar with the book of Hebrews chapter 11, is what is called the faith hall of fame. Because the whole of chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews is about faith. It defines faith and then it shows us examples of faith. Uh, from both the Old Testament, uh, from mainly from the Old Testament, running through the lives of people who lived by faith. So, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 26, 24 to 26. And let us hear the reading of God's word. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward. I would want you to note three words, each occurring in each of the three verses that I read. In verse 24, note the word refused, refused. And uh, you can underline it in your Bible. Verse 25, choosing, choosing, underline choosing or highlight it. And in verse 26, esteeming, underline or highlight it. If you're using different translations of the Bible, they may have different words, but carrying the same idea. Refuse, choose, esteem. In the Bible, there is an account of Egypt. And that's where Moses was. And there is a real Egypt, a real historical Egypt. However... Many times throughout the Bible, uh, students of the Bible see Egypt also as a symbol of oppression or a symbol of the world system. So in my message today, uh, I want you to see Egypt in that sense as a world system or as an oppressive system. That is what Egypt was to Moses. Moses was born into Egypt, a nation that oppressed his people. And you and I are born into an oppressive world system that also wants to keep us down. But we are here to refuse and to reject being kept down. So our passage today deals with Moses and how he refused something that was supposed to be a blessing for him. By faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. To refuse simply means to say no to something. Many of us know how to say yes 
and have never learned how to say no. But there are certain things in life that we must learn to say no to. And by faith, Moses was able to say no to Pharaoh's daughter. And the passage says that Moses was able to say no when Moses became of age. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The phrase became of age uh, is very important because this became of age for Moses happened when he was 40 years old. That is when he became fully aware of himself. The phrase became of age means to reach maturity. When he got to maturity, when he left childishness or childhood and came to maturity, he became of age. Interestingly, when you read uh, the original language, the phrase became of age also means to discover your greatness. To discover your greatness. So when Moses became of age, he discovered his greatness. He found that his life was far bigger than just becoming a son of Pharaoh's daughter. And no matter how great your parents are, you must discover your greatness beyond your parentage. At some point in our lives, each one of us must seek an identity greater than just being the child of so and so. Your father may have achieved greatness, your mother may have achieved greatness, but when you become of age, you must seek your own greatness. And that's what Moses uh, was born into. He was born into a, uh, or he grew up in a very prestigious environment, but when he became of age, he discovered his own greatness. May God help you to discover your greatness. And the book of Acts gives us some clarity as to how that happened. Acts chapter 7 verse 23 says, Now when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren the children of Israel. It came into his heart. That phrase is another way of saying it dawned on him or he became aware or something burned in his heart. When Moses reached this age, something kicked inside him and told him, you are bigger than that, Moses. You are better than that, Moses. You are greater than that, Moses. You, you, he, something touched him and he knew that he had something to do with his life. And there are moments in our lives when each one of us must come of age and realize the purpose of our lives. Now, if you know the story of Moses, when Moses was a child, there was a decree that was made by the Pharaoh of Egypt at that time that every male child should be killed. That was not a decision Moses made. It was made by Pharaoh. And his parents made a decision for him that he was a good boy, he was a handsome boy, and he would not die. So the Bible says they hid him for a long time and prevented him from being destroyed. This was not a, mo uh, a decision of Moses. This was a decision of his parents. Then when it was impossible to hide him, his parents took him to a place where he would be discovered by Pharaoh's daughter. They knew where Pharaoh's daughter went to have her birth and they took Moses, put him in the river and waited to see what, was ha ha what would happen. And Moses was discovered by Pharaoh's daughter. So the parents made a decision for him, a good one. Then Pharaoh's daughter discovered Moses and made a decision that he would not allow this boy to be killed. But he would raise the boy as a prince of Egypt. So she made a decision also 
for Moses. So far, good decisions are being made for him. His parents have made a good decision for him. Pharaoh's daughter has made a good decision for him. Then when Moses came of age, he had to decide for himself. No matter what decision has been made for you, there comes a time when you must make your own decision. And he came of age. And Moses had grown with a label. And the label was Prince of Egypt. That's his label. That's his title, Prince of Egypt. If you lived in those times, I'm sure that there will be servants walking around him and call him Prince, Mr. Prince, Prince of Egypt, Prince of Egypt. And probably there were uh, umbrellas on top of him. All the, if he was in Ghana, people would be carrying him in a palanquin. He was a privileged boy. That was his label. That was his title. But his mission was not Prince of Egypt. His mission was deliverer of Israel. So he has a label that says you are a prince, but his mission was deliverer. There are times when your label doesn't fit your mission. What you are called doesn't fit what you have been called to do. How people see you doesn't fit how God sees you. And there are times when a label you have inherited does not fit you. For Moses, the label seemed to be a good label. But some of us have grown up with wrong labels that does not fit our mission. And today I came to tell you, you can refuse the wrong label. So for everyone with a self-limiting label, something people say about you, something that has been imposed on you, they may have done it with good intention, but it is a limitation to your mission. May God set you free. In the Bible, you find many people who inherited a wrong label, but their mission was greater. If you are Jephthah, the label on your life says, Halot son, or prostitute son, if you be blunt. But the mission on your life says, the Lord's warrior. So life says you are a hallowed son. God says you are a mighty warrior, the Lord's warrior. If you are Jabez, the label on your life says you are a child of pain. But the mission on your life says possessor of enlarged territories. So you have to choose the label or the mission. If you are Paul, the label on your life says persecutor of the church. But the mission of your life says planter of churches. If you are David, the label on your life says conceived in iniquity. But the mission of your life says the man after God's heart. If you are Esther, the label on your life says orphaned slave girl. But the mission of your life says queen and a national influencer. If you are Gideon, the label on your life says timid farmer, but the mission of your life says mighty man of valor. I don't know about you. If there is a label upon your life that does not fit your mission, you have to reject it. Somebody say, I reject it. And there are people who have been wrongly labeled. Maybe you made a mistake once in your lifetime. And people have determined that is who you are for your lifetime. Maybe you made a mistake in secondary school and people want to make it your lifetime mission. But you have to reject it. It was a mistake in the past, but it was not destiny. God has an assignment for you. God has a destiny for you and you will fulfill it. When you grow up as an African, you inherit a label, third world. But your mission is not third world. My mission is not third world. My mission is a world changer. My mission is a global influencer. That is your mission. The world may call you third, but you are first on God's mind. So Moses had a label. Prince of Egypt. Seemed like a pretty good one. But the mission was greater than Prince of Egypt. In fact, if he had remained prince of Egypt, we would never have heard of him. 
but he took on the mission, liberator of God's people in Israel. And thousands of years after that, we still talk about Moses because he moved from the label to the mission. So what did Moses do when he became of age? There are three things, three main things he did. First, he refused the wrong label. He refused the wrong label. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He did it by faith. He refused to be called by a label that was not his mission. He stopped living by his childhood's fear. Fear had been part of Moses' life. It was fear that landed him in the palace of Pharaoh. It was the fear of his parents that dictated all the choices they made for him. And there are adults who are still living by their childhood fear. The fear of your parents have limited your potential. The fear of your past has limited your potential. There are decisions that parents make for children out of fear. Don't do that. Don't dream that. Don't aspire to do that. The world is dangerous. There are witches. There are wizards. Our family is hard. Things are tough. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. And that imposes a burden on you. The fear of your childhood has become a limitation of your future. I came to announce to somebody, it's time to reject the fear of your childhood. In the midst of witches, you will prosper. You can't live your life looking behind you to see which auntie is coming after you, which uncle is coming after you, what system is coming after you. You have to live your life looking at the vision that God has for you, the mission ahead of you, and fulfilling destiny. Somebody say, I refuse the wrong label. He stopped living by his childhood fear. And he stopped living a lie. It's a lie. Moses' life was a lie for 40 years. He was called an Egyptian, but he was a Hebrew. There was a time that that pretense probably saved his life. But at this point, it had no point. And there are people who have continued to live a lie. You boast of a school you didn't attend. You pride yourself in grades you didn't have. You pride yourself to have passed tests that you failed. You point to houses that are not yours. You point to relatives that you are not related to. All to boost your self-esteem. But a time has come when you are of age, you have to come out as you are. I am not an Egyptian, Moses says. I'm a Hebrew. It may have helped you to deal with issues in your past. But it's not helping you now because you cannot live a lie. You cannot continue pretending to be whom you are not. You cannot continue running away from the mission that God has given to you because it seems dangerous for you. Moses refused the wrong label. And there are people who must refuse the wrong label. Somebody just saw you once and determined this is how far you will go. Your teacher just marked one paper of yours and told you you were not smart. Maybe he marked even 10 papers and told you you were not smart. You cannot achieve much. You don't have the brains. You don't have the intelligence. Somebody saw you fail in one area and said, be careful of that area. That's not your ability. And you imprison yourself in a wrong label. When God has called you for a mission greater than the label of your fears and the label of your limitations, may God set you free. May you stop living a lie. May God give you the victory. Somebody say, I refuse every wrong label. Moses did not only refuse a label, but he chose God's mission. Verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. For Moses, it was a very tough choice. 
because the label he was rejecting and what he was choosing, it seemed like he was moving away from something good to something hard. But Moses accepted his divine calling and he acted in line with God's mission. He actually started doing something about it. People didn't accept it. He tried to act like a liberator, not like a pampered prince. When God has a mission for you, it will always conflict with the label that has been put on your life. The label on my life when I was growing up is not the mission I'm living out now. If I had lived by the label of my life, I would be nowhere near a pulpit. I'd be nowhere near preaching. Because when I was young, I was not brilliant. I wasn't a smart student. I was borderline. You know what borderline is? Borderline. I, re I remember in, in one, one year of my school, you know, when in, in at that time in our school, when you feel you are either repeated or thrown away, and my name was just on top of the red line. Just the red line and the insultable right there. If somebody had just had one more mark, I will go beyond the red line. But you see, my mission is not based on how I am assessed in the classroom. Because my destiny is bigger than my report card. My report card may say borderline, average, you can't do much. But my mission is greater than that. And I had to choose God's mission for my life. I had to choose and it's amazing what happens when you choose God's way. All of a sudden, you become intelligent. All of a sudden, you, you become capable. All of a sudden, the fear that made you underperform is gone. And you are performing and overperforming. Why? Because you refuse a wrong label and you have chosen the mission of God. May God help you. May God help you. May God help you. Moses chose God's mission for his life. How could Moses do that? How could he make such a choice? That's the third point. Because the Bible says he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. He esteemed God's mission as better. He saw God's mission as more significant he compared the mission that God had for him with the label that Egypt had given to him. And he said, what God has for me is better. And he expected his reward from God. There are people living in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, I dare say in their 70s and 80s. And the life they are living as adults is based on a label that was put on them when they were a child. When they were a child, they were told, bad boy. You are a bad boy. You are a criminal. Because maybe they went behind their house and smoked some little something. And all of a sudden, everybody says, hey, he's a bad boy. He's a bad boy because he smoked something. Oh, he's a bad girl. Because he went to do something with somebody. Caught with a boy behind the house, under a tree. Just caught with a boy, a silly boy anyway. And all of a sudden, everybody says, you are a bad girl. You are a bad girl. You are a bad girl. And the sad thing is, you grow up saying, as for me, I'm bad, oh. I'm bad, oh. I'm bad, oh. You've accepted a label based on one tiny mistake as a child. A 
And everybody says you are a sex addict, you are a drug addict, you are a drunkard, you are weak because of some label, some mistake of your childhood. And there you are struggling at 40, struggling at 50, struggling at 60 because you cannot shake this label off you. Today I came to announce deliverance to every captive. By faith, you will refuse the wrong label. For some of you, the label has been small boy, small girl. I remember when I started working, I was quite young, but I was working. And there was one of the staff members, a senior, who just decided he has to call me small boy. I, for whatever reason, I mean, I said, I'm not competing with you. I, I think I was better than him. But, you know, that shouldn't make you call me small boy. And every time he call me small boy, small boy, small boy. And one day I mustered the courage. I said, sir, I'm not a small boy. I'm working in the same office with you. I don't like you calling me small boy. He says, you are a small boy. I mean, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't change him. Small boy, small boy, small boy. Called me small boy. And then years later, years later, I went to preach somewhere in the United States. And he was there. And he came to see me after. Oh, sir. Oh, my boss. Sir, my boss. Said, when did small boy become my boss? But you know, there are people who want to belittle you. They will call you names. Even when you reject it, they will call you because they want you to accept your littleness, your weakness, your inability, your incapacity. They want to put you under your feet under their feet, but I came to announce to somebody, God has a mission for your life and you will refuse it. Pharaoh's daughter says, I found you in a river. Moses, I saved you. Without me, you are nothing. Without me, you are going nowhere. You are my boy. You belong to Egypt. You belong to me. This is your future. Moses says, thank you for all you did for me. I appreciate it, but my destiny is not limited to where you want me to be. I refuse to stay in your shadow. And by faith... Moses chose something better and esteemed it greater. If you are an adult living in the shadow of your youth, I came to announce liberation to you. If you are living a life based on a label that was put on you when you were 12 years old, 12 years old, what, what did you know? You didn't know any better. So you were a nice girl and the area boy kissed you. And he didn't even know how to kiss. And then your big brother caught you. And then everybody now in the area says you are a bad girl. And they use the word I don't want to use. It doesn't befit you. And you were an adult at 36, at 40, at 50. And you still think I am unclean. I am not worthy. I cannot be used by God. I cannot do anything great because somebody labeled me in my youth. May God deliver you. May God deliver you. Or maybe you start in class and repeated a class and repeated it twice and repeated it three times. But you finally scraped through after repetitions and repetitions. So it's become a label. On your head, you're not smart. You're not smart. You can't do much. You are nothing. I came to announce that label can be rejected and you can be somebody and you can do something for God and for yourself. Or maybe you went through a stage in your life. You served. You were a houseboy. You were a house girl. You, you just... Saved people. 
and somebody has decided you cannot progress beyond that. This is, this is who you are for life because you served. Because you cleaned somebody's home for him. Or, or served somebody and helped them. And, and, and they feel you cannot go beyond that. I came to announce to you. There was a moment when you were a child. But when you come of age, when you become like Moses, Moses refused and he chose a better way. Today, God wants you to choose a better way. And if you want to exercise your faith to refuse, you have every right to refuse it. You refuse small boy. You refuse third world. If there is a label that we must refuse as Africans, as black people, is third world nation. Third world nation. Underdeveloped. People treat us as if we can't help ourselves. They have to come and help us before things will happen for us. If they don't help Africa, Africa is dead. Africa cannot survive. Africa is, a, is the burden of the world. We refuse that label. And if anything, God has shown us during this pandemic that the label of the world does not stick on us. They said we're going to die like flies. The world was perplexed. How are we going to handle Africa? How are we going to handle those people who can help themselves? They can help themselves. What kind of medicine? There is no cure. Oh, Africa. Oh, Africa. Who is standing? Who is standing? And the people who said they can handle themselves, they had the first wave of the virus, they couldn't handle it. Second wave, they can handle it. And they're watching. What happened to those people? It is called a sign. God gave us a sign to say, Africa, the days of wearing the label of third world, of weak you can't do it. You can't make it. Somebody must help you. If they don't help you, you are dying. God says, Africa, that day is over. We have come of age. And we choose the mission of God. We are the redeemers of the world. We are the top of the world. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not be beneath. Because like Moses, we reject the wrong label. And we choose the mission of God. Lift up your hands with me. For everyone struggling with the wrong label. I don't know what label you are struggling with. I don't know what you did that has trapped you. But for today, I speak into your spirit man. Your spirit man. I speak deliverance. I speak release. I speak freedom. Into your spirit, into your mind, into your heart. I go back into your history, into your youth. Your youth in primary school, in secondary school, in university. And I declare that every label upon your life, in your neighborhood, in your family, that has limited you is broken today. In the name of Jesus. And may God set you free. And may you, like Moses, rise up to fulfill your God-given mission in Jesus' name. And everybody say, amen. amen and amen. And let me give you an assignment. From now onwards, when anybody repeats the wrong label, even if you cannot tell them boldly in their face, under your breath, say, I reject it. I refuse it. I reject it. I ref you have to reject it. And you have to choose a better way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.